Right now, I am in Dublin, in ah. Ireland, back home. You're Thank back home. God. Okay. You flew out of lockdown, basically, South Africa, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so basically what happened was it was a repatriation flight organized for me by the Irish Embassy. And as far as I understand, it's the German embassy that actually organized the evacuation flights and then different European nations were able to collaborate with them to get their residents home. Oh, really? So what happened was, yeah, they were German chartered flights and basically each nation had a certain number of seats. So when I knew lockdown had started, I got in touch with the Irish embassy and said, obviously I'm here. I just want you to know that if something's happening, please take me with you. <laughs> and um, basically what happened was they said about these flights and there was a waiting list and they put me on the list and I just have to kind of wait to see what happens. They weren't sure either way, but they were so helpful, I have to say. But basically what happened was the flights got you to Germany and yeah. then you had to sort yourself out from there. But thankfully my insurance company were absolutely unbelievable to the point where they called to make sure that I got home okay and everything absolutely fantastic. And mm. um, yes, yeah, so I managed to get home, but it took me about 40, 45 hours to actually get home really? the whole trip. <clears throat> that must yeah, be the so longest, had, longest flight in history. <laughs> it was long. <laughs> Not surprising. So I, had, I had three flights, um, but the first thing that happened was I had to go to a meeting point. So you, could, you can't make your way to the airport by yourself in South Africa at the moment anyway. Really? Um, there was oh, because a meeting of point. the lockdown? because of the lockdown, um, which was one of the stadiums in Cape Town. And then we got to the stadium and we all had to queue, but of course, you know, with distancing and whatnot between us. And then we had to get tested for our temperature. And then we all got separated and put onto different buses. And then we were taken to the airport from there. And then I had my first flight to Frankfurt. And then I had a layover there for five or six hours. Then I flew to London, lay over there for five or six hours. And then I eventually got home. God, that's oh. so <laughs> I know, it was intense. Word word. <laughs> and I yeah. barely slept the whole trip. Like, of course, because it, everyone was so mixed emotions. Like, it was Adrenaline. really interesting. Yeah, everybody that was traveling, you could just sense that the, everyone's emotions were high. And I was speaking to a couple of people and they were the same. Um, but I think that all of the emotional energy, by the time I got God, home, I, I was just imagine. exhausted. Yeah, I, I crashed. Yeah. So, yeah. like, what, what's South Africa like at the moment in, in lockdown? So for me, I actually wasn't able to leave the Airbnb that I was staying at with the group that I was with for the entirety of the lockdown. At all? So you can't even go out for your hours, exercise, um, nothing? No, no, no exercise or dog walking or anything like that in South Africa. Um, you can go to the shop or the pharmacy, um, but only one person is allowed to leave at a time and only one person can go in a car. So within our group, the, the <laughs> men decided to do that just <laughs> For whatever reason, I, I felt a little more comfortable. <laughs> Chivalry, yeah. Um, They're going to take the bullet. <laughs> yeah. But no, no dog walking or anything like that. Now we were lucky in the sense that the the property that we were staying at had a lot of space and nature around it, so we were able to be in the garden. But um, um, no, it's very, very strict over there. But it's it's obviously uh, this time is so unknown, and there's a lot of uncertainty, and I think that we're all kind of yeah getting to grips with it but you know once I knew that I was going to be there I just tried to focus the time where possible and I was with great people and I was the main thing was that we were all safe and you know in touch with families thank god for wi-fi and making sure that everyone is okay so yeah interesting you, mentioned the people. You, 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 met, you met a few interesting people over there I mean you've got Richard Branson the Mandela's oh, you know yeah. so you, did, you didn't spend your time you know kind of uh, taking out the bins no, I was cooking and tidying up dishes and whatnot. So very, yeah. very normal. But no, I mean, in the, the past few years, I didn't meet those people on this trip. But in the past um, couple of years, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of what I feel to be the most remarkable minds and getting to spend time with people like that is just, I, I love getting to hear people's stories and seeing where people came from and how they got to where they are and just connecting with people all the time. You know, yeah, same here. That's, that's why I'm doing these box. things. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm doing <laughs> these things. I mean, it's, it's basically, yeah, just to download yourself and Rob's brains about how you feel about yeah, things. It's amazing to think that if this had happened, this lockdown had happened, say, 20 years ago, mm. things would have been considerably worse. No, oh, bad my gosh. They are. Like, just, but, like, so I've been working from home for the last six weeks today, mm -hmm. six weeks today. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not ideal, but it's pretty, it's, mm -hmm. it's as good as it could be. Whereas 20 years ago, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Really. You know what I mean? Because you don't have share drives. You, you, you very little you could do. So technology has enabled us to, to now, and obviously that doesn't work for everyone. You know, if you're in the hospitality industry, obviously there's, there's not much you can do, but 
in, yeah. in general, technology helps a lot of people get through this. And uh, it definitely, more importantly, it, it keeps people connected, yes. uh, which is really critical. Yeah, I think it's really, uh, for me, it's a fascinating conversation because I've always been very passionate about digital and mm. the importance of digital and how it's a, it's a new economy and we need to be digitally friendly as entrepreneurs and business owners and whatnot. And for a long time, like I've experienced this, you know, clients of mine and people that I've worked with in the past have always said, oh, you know, I, I don't really want to go digital yet or I don't need to mm-hmm. or my business is better offline and, 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 and so forth. And I think it's really proven just how, one, you, there, is, there are so many options to make your business sustainable by transitioning online. You just have to be open-minded. But also, it's, I think it's forced a lot of us to, to do things that we have been putting off for a long time. And, yeah. It's and made a step change. It's more about, adaptable. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's even for myself. Like, you know, I'm very digital, but I've also been putting things off because I've been busy with other things and whatnot. And now it's kind of that time where it's like, okay, you need to, you know, to kick yourself up the behind now and start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Start doing those things that you're putting off. And- no excuses. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. so yeah, you met Richard Branson and the Mandelas. How did what, what, what was it like meeting the Mandelas? Instead of um, it was it was. I mean, a very unexpected experience. I had the opportunity to go, um, thanks to a friend of mine who invited me to the Global Citizen, I mean, I went to the Global Citizen concert. This was in 2018. Now I went, the first time was my first trip to South Africa and I went to Johannesburg. And um, it was a celebration of the Manila 100 Festival, a multiple to the um, a, a gala at the family home and so I got to, to meet the family or some amazing people there so Bob Geldof is there and Naomi Campbell and just I, I was like I don't know how I end up in these situations but it was really it was really amazing obviously the, the family has been through a lot and um, yeah. you know Nelson Mandela is a, is a prime prime figure and it was interesting because my first trip to Necker Island I actually found myself sat beside Richard at dinner and we started talking about Virgin Galactic and his relationship with the elders and Kofi Annan and Nelson Mandela. And it was interesting how everything came full circle. But I think it just goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning. I just love getting to know different people and, and being around different people and, and hearing different stories and seeing how people get to where they are and perceptions and, and all of those things. So it was just another experience like that. But I have to say one of the highlights for me was I was at um, another event then the next night at the family home again. And Sir Bob Geldof was there. And of course, I, I think as far as I know, I was the only other I Irish person there so as soon oh, as yeah. I saw him walk in I thought to myself is that is that Bob <laughs> and I was like oh my god it is so of course I you know later on I was introduced to him and we were chatting about Dublin and he told me that he thought I had great rhythm because we were all playing the African drums and it was just it was just one of those experiences that you just don't forget it was really really cool to meet him he's obviously a music legend and he's done so many good things as well for the world so in fact he's got a new single out at the moment doesn't he the boom Tom rats oh, a new single out gosh. yeah yeah they were yeah, I think you're right. They were definitely they did a re-release. Was it a re-release or a new single? I thought it was a brand new. I haven't heard it now, but somebody yeah, said. No, it I wasn't aware of that. I need to go and Google they, this. They, 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 yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of which, cool. Hannah, you have a new single out. I do. I don't know if yeah. you guys have heard it. Um, yeah, I'm super. It, the whole thing changed as everybody's plans mm. has changed because yeah. of the coronavirus and the lockdown, and so. Um, things definitely shifted slightly but it's been really exciting i mean i feel so so humbled because i've been really supported by radio here at home mm. with the song and you know some of the you know i've just been blown away because i was in south africa when the single launched and so i wasn't at home but the support has been absolutely amazing it's been playlisted now on multiple stations here and the That's response great. to the track has been amazing. And I, you know, obviously whenever you put something out, but especially a creative project, I think especially with music, it's so personal that it's oh, like, yeah. it's yeah. almost like you're giving your diary or whatever to the world. And so yes, yeah. I was nervous. I was nervous. And um, the response has just been so, so humbling and amazing. And I'm so excited to do more music, but it's interesting now how everything, even with the music industry, you know, apparently there may not be live performances until 2021. So everybody's looking at how do we, tran- you know, transition to digital. Every industry has to become more adaptable and so exactly yeah i'm excited to see what possibilities there are and what's to come in the next the next chapter yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Rob I'll put it in the sunshine if you want to listen to it on spotify <laughs> yes I'll, I'll put it in the description here yeah, yeah definitely awesome. yeah, rob you. rob when's your single coming out i see you've picked up the guitar as well you're, yes you're, 
Uh, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, might as well. I Maybe think everybody a little jam someday. Yes, <laughs> next time we'll, behind me. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you so write your own stuff too, Fergus, don't you? I mean, you wrote I, the um, you wrote the the soundtrack for one of the films. Your yeah, film. yeah, I write, yeah. I write songs, or I'd enjoy doing that. Yeah, and oh, I love that. At, at a time like now, it's definitely. No better time to be doing it, you know. I will, I will right. say on that, though, I, I've been thinking about this a while. There's a bit of um, self improvement shaming going on, I think. With, with, <laughs> with, there with, is. Yeah. And, particularly for creatives, in that some people are put under unbelievable pressure going, oh, this is, I have to produce the next great American novel or the next great, you know, number one album because I have all this time. And I think it's putting people under a lot of time. It is. A right. lot of pressure. You're and, right. I, I think you just it, it's whatever works for you you might this is about survival so you might necessarily you might get great creative output or you might not yeah and uh, as a result you just have to have to go with what suits you like i find i'm all, i if i'm in a creative process i create more when i'm very very busy so when i have three yeah. or four different things going on and that's just the way it works uh, yeah. whereas when i don't have as much going on i find it very hard to to get going and get into motion so this time it's been completely be similar to you, to be honest. uncreative for me <laughs> i have to say yeah it's yeah. true no you're right there is an awful lot of pressure on and you get all these memes saying you know Albert, yeah. or you know that newton uh, uh, isaac newton was quarantined from you should be coming yeah. up with the laws of gravity as well you know oh, or yeah. schrodinger's yeah. equation like <laughs> string yeah. theory so yeah there is a lot of pressure on people and you're dead right it's it's a momentum thing if you're very productive and normally busy then you'll get more done if you're kind of particularly when people are thrown into this situation and they can be less productive, it's very difficult to adapt. Exactly, you know? because it's, it's yeah. a completely unusual, unprecedented time that, that no one has any, no one in liver memory has any um, uh, yeah. favorite reference for. Absolutely. And it's only been about six weeks, really. Yeah. Like two months ago, this thing was there, but it wasn't really in, in our kind of, in Ireland anyway, in the West, it wasn't really a, a major focus two months ago. You were kind of getting a little bit worried about it and there was talk about it. And then it, suddenly, wasn't, it wasn't impacting your life. You know, now all of a sudden the whole life, country yeah. shut down. And then suddenly yeah. in six, you know, six weeks ago, you know, everything changed. You know, four or six weeks ago, depending on, on, on kind of when you shut down. And mm -hmm. it's going to take a while for people to adapt. And we, we still don't know. And there's a lot of uncertainty. So this type of thing about, oh, if you don't come out with you know, um, a creative project by the end of this, it doesn't mean that you didn't have the time just on the discipline. But you know I, what though, like, to, uh, one thing that I've been thinking a lot about is that like, I also feel when I have 101 things going on, when I'm traveling, when I'm on the go, even if I'm sleeping less, I feel more energized, I feel more, more passionate, I feel like my creative juices are flowing. And yeah. then obviously it's the opposite of that for all of us. But well, I think as well, um, to focus more on the positives because obviously there's a yeah. lot of negatives surrounding the situation and if we think about those we'll just be miserable all the time Absolutely. think about yeah. the positive when do we ever have the opportunity to be at home with our families with everyone mm -hmm. at home whenever do we have like without the pressures of uh, usually everybody's got something going on when, yeah, when you're exactly. in your family something you're working different projects <laughs> school sports like whatever your commitments are and i know for me in the past three years i've been away from home I would say more than I've been here. And when I have been here, I've been working all the time. That's been a choice for me. And I'm really passionate about entrepreneur as well as music. But now coming home, it's, it's nice to just be present. And I think that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments that we can have from this experience is to just be present because I think we take for granted time with our families. We take for granted our relationships. 